so in the previous lecture we uh, discussed the different types of end plate connections rigid connections a variety of rigid connections which is known as end plate connections and one and then also we solved one example on how to design an end plate connection in this lecture we will discuss another variety of rigid connections which involves welding of the beam flange directly to the column so these are typically known as welded flange or cover plate type of connections so here some of the examples are shown of such connections um, i'll elaborate a bit so this is basically a column that is supporting two beams one on either side and uh, this is the top view of the same connection here you might see that the web of the beam is welded to the column also the flanges are groove welded to the column so the web here is fillet welded to the column and the flanges are groove welded now a couple of things you might notice is that the top side there is a bevel in each flange which is groove welded to the column in this particular uh, diagram you do not see any continuity plates or any uh, horizontal stiffeners in the column but sometimes that may also be required depending on the local stresses that we are introducing in the column web and also what is the requirement of shear stresses in the uh, in the column web one more detail that could be of interest to us is that it is not necessary to weld the web of the beam to the column so even though we are welding the flange the flanges to the column the web could be also bolted because the mechanism of force transfer for the two types of uh, part or for the two parts of this connection are quite different and therefore it is possible to mix welds with bolts because bolts will be primarily designed to resist the shear force and these welds will be designed only to resist the uh, the bending moment in all these joints you might also notice this access hole that has been provided we will talk about that in a minute okay. the other example here some continuity plates could be provided some stiffeners could be required and in another example here what you see is a very uh, different type of a connection where the top flange of the beam is not directly welded to the column but there is another plate which is used and which is actually slanted plates with a redu reduced cross section thickness and that is welded to the beam and then other end of the plate is welded to the column and in addition to that separate arrangements are made to transfer the shear force so in this particular case both a shear plate as well as an angle seat is provided so in this uh, lecture we will discuss the force transfer mechanism and design considerations for uh, these types of connections and we'll, then we will do one example so here you can see in this diagram a typical um, rigid connection wherein the beam flanges are directly welded to the column so as we have discussed the beam flanges are groove welded and they are meant to transfer the design moment capacity design mom moment demands and the shear force is transferred through the web so the web could be welded to the column but also it is quite common to bolt it to the column so typically what we do is the column and this shear tab or shear angle or any of the any alternative um, shear connecting element would be shop welded to the column and then the column would be brought to the site with this component welded to it and then the beam is also brought to the site wherein all these geometrical features have been added at the shop and brought to the site then at the site first these the beam is aligned with this uh, with these holes and then these bolts are placed so these bolts also uh, not only resist shear they also act as uh, support during the erection process once these bolts are in place then this beam is stable then um, welders can get there and they can weld uh, they can provide a site weld between the beam flange and the column flange okay so since in this connection the beam is directly welded to the column instead of an intermediate end plate like what, what we saw in the previous case because of that this connection is more rigid in comparison to an end plate connection typically 
so as i mentioned just now this uh, this weld which is the groove weld it's a sight weld so generally sight welds are to be avoided but in this type of a connection sight weld cannot be avoided and appropriate provisions should be made for proper inspection and quality control for any sight weld in addition to increasing the factor of safety that we use for a welded connection so here you might notice that only the top faces of the flange should be beveled why the top face because that is where the welder can easily access and easily deposit the welded material the welding material if it was beveled from the bottom it would be very difficult to weld upside down okay because it's a sight weld we cannot rotate the column upside down it has to be welded in this configuration only so it is better to bevel them in the same direction so that sign is shown here representing the bevel in the uh, bevel groove in the column in the beam flange and typically such welds are complete joint penetration welds complete joint penetration weld is critical because it provides it the required level of ductility which is usually missing in a um, partial joint penetration weld when we pull this flange apart from this flange if it's a partial joint penetration weld uh, and uh, there is no other uh, component resisting opening of the root a pjp type of a weld would perform very poorly under this situation therefore in such situations complete joint penetration is very critical access holes are also required at both sides so here obviously we require the access hole so that we can reach the full penetration so because of the presence of the web it is very difficult to take the electrode all the way from one side to the other side the web uh, prevents moving of the weld from this side to other side therefore in order for us to develop a nice groove weld a continuous weld we have to cut a small hole so that welder can first weld from this side all the way to the middle and go a little bit over to the other side on the middle from the middle and then complete the weld from the other side here also an excess weld is required um, because again we need to provide in addition to uh, in order to be able to provide this weld uh, sometimes this gap is a bit uh, too much and we may have to provide a backing strip or a backing plate and when we need to provide a backing plate we also require to cut this portion so that backing plate can be tack welded to the beam these excess holes also play a, a very important role in separating the moments from shear so because of the presence of this this particular geometry of this excess hole and this geometry is also if you go to the detailing guidelines you will see that this geometry is very specific and one, one needs to satisfy that specific geometrical requirement in order to avoid any stress concentrations in this region so but because of the presence of this excess hole any shear force demand does not get transferred to the flange because if the if you can imagine if we move this beam up or down it will the flange can very easily deform and does not would not transfer a lot of shear force to the weld and most of the shear force will get transferred through these bolted joints in these connections as well uh, if the stress concentration because after the groove weld is done this will become a monolithic kind of a component and any axial forces which are acting on these flanges will get transferred to the column flanges and then to the column web which may introduce uh, local stresses which can cause uh, web crippling and web uh, local buckling etc in order to avoid that we have to put some uh, we may have to provide the stiffeners and also if the shear capacity is not available not sufficient not sufficient we may provide some kind of a doubler plate or a diagonal stiffener so now we know the basic philosophy of these connections how they behave they are very simple for calculation uh, point of view the only challenge with these connections is that they require a site welding which is very critical for the performance of the connection but these are one of the very common types of connections especially when it comes to moment resisting frames so in this example the beam dimensions are given ismb 400 um the the different crit, um, useful parameters such as the thickness of the flange the width of the flange and thickness of the web are also mentioned here the column is an ishb 300 section the column of course is a not as deep as the beam but uh, it is wider than the beam so columns width is 250 mm as compared to the width of the beam which is only 140 mm
Then there is a shear tab that has been provided. Shear tab is just a plate, which is a 10 millimeter thick plate of dimensions 225 in the vertical direction and 125 millimeters in the horizontal direction. And then appropriate uh, bolts are provided. So three bolts of uh, 22 millimeter diameter and 8.8 .8 grade are snug tightened in these locations. The force demands are given as the shear force demand is 300 kilonewton and the factored moment demand is given as 125 kilonewton meters. So there is a vertical force in this direction which is 300 kilonewton and there is a moment of 125 kilonewton meter. So we will go one component at a time. First we will check the strength of the bolt, then we will check the strength of the weld which is provided between the shear plate and the flange of the column. We are assuming here that the shear plate is safe for this for this force demand. Uh, one, one may check however whether it is sufficient or not. In this calculation we will not check the strength of the shear plate. And then subsequently we will check, uh, we'll design the welds here and here. So since these are complete penetration joint welds, we already know the dimensions. All we can do is we can check whether they are sufficient or not. So we will start with the bolt strength. There are total three bolts. There are three bearing surfaces between the bolt and the beam web and there are three bearing surfaces between the bolt and the shear plate. Now the shear plate thickness is given as 10 millimeters but the thickness of the web of the beam was only 8.9 millimeters and we are assuming here that all these sections are made of um, FE410 type of steel. Its yield stress is 250 MPa and the ultimate stress is 410 MPa. The bolts are 8.8 .8 grade bolts. So for the design of the bolts, let's first assume that the pitch and the end distances are sufficient that they don't start to control the strength of the bolt. So first let's look at the bearing strength of one bolt. So bearing strength for one bolt is given by 2.5 times dt fu kb. I hope you remember what these parameters represent divided by gamma mb. Gamma mb is the factor of safety. Now fu was the uh, ultimate strength of the bolt and the KB factor controlled the effects of the pitch versus if the bolt is of a weaker uh, bolt is stronger than the plate then we would use the FU of the plate. The D is the diameter of the bolt and T, T is the thickness of the plate that we are designing for. So since the thickness of the web of the beam is smaller than the thickness of the shear plate so we will use TW of the beam. Since there are three bolts we will multiply the same values with three. So 3 multiplied by 2.5 multiplied by the diameter of the bolt multiplied by the thickness of the web multiplied by the FU of the uh, of the beam web divided by a factor of safety of 1.25 and we get the bearing capacity of 3 bolts as 482 kN. Shear strength of the bolt so the bolt itself can undergo shearing type of a failure we need to check for that. So shearing shear strength again uh, I hope you remember where it comes from. Um, is given by ANFU assuming that the shear plane passes through the threaded portion of the bolt that is a conservative assumption ANFU divided by root 3 divided by gamma MB and multiplied by 3 bolts so 3. So area of cross section area of a bolt can be taken as pi R squared R is uh, 11 millimeters 11 millimeters multiplied by 0 0.78. So 0 0.78 basically is the factor that we can multiply the cross cross section of the shank to calculate the net cross section of the threaded portion. Multiplied by Fu by root 3 divided by 1.25. So here Fu uh, for this bolt is uh, 800 MPa. So 800 MPa divided by root 3 will give us 462 divided by 1.25 and we get the shear strength of the bolt as 328 kN. Now the demand for the factored shear force demand was given as 300 kN. The shear strength of this bolted joint is more than 300. It is actually 328 so it is safe. So now let us check the strength of this weld that uh, is connecting this shear tab with the column flange. So as you can see there are two welds one on each side of the shear tab. The size of the weld is marked as 6 millimeters 
So the strength of this weld can be calculated easily. You know the expression for the strength of a fillet weld. We use Fu divided by root 3 as the material strength because we assume that the strength of such a weld is governed by shear strength. That is as per the Indian standard code IS 800. LW is the length of the weld multiplied by the throat thickness. So this gives LW multiplied by throat thickness gives us the uh, effective cross section area divided by gamma MW. That is the factor of safety. Factor of safety in this particular case, we will take it because this is this will be a shop welded connection at this location and this weld will be site welded. But this is a shop welded connection. Therefore, we can take gamma MW as 1.25. Okay. So we substitute the values Fu ultimate stress for the parent metal is 410 MPa. Length of the weld, so since the plate depth or the plate length is 225 millimeters, we will leave some uh, uh, at the ends, we should terminate slightly short of that edge. Therefore, we, we I am leaving uh, three times the weld size at each end and that is the actual length that is available multiplied by A by root 2, that is the weld size divided by root 2 and the factor of safety. And we can calculate this strength to be 333 kilonewton and the shear force demand was given as 300 kilonewton. So the shear strength of this joint is more than the shear demand. Therefore, this plate, this weld is also safe. So now we have checked the safety of these bolts and safety of this, this weld. Now let's check the safety of these welds that are between the beam flange and the column flange for the given bending moment demands. Now these welds, of course, they are given as com uh, complete joint penetration welds and they are done on both flanges. So the thickness of the weld or the throat size of this weld will be 16 millimeters. That is the thickness of the flange of the beam. So we will use 16 millimeters as the throat size and using that we can calculate the capacity of this weld under tension. So now let us calculate the strength of these welds under this type of loading wherein this uh, flange undergoes tension. So as you know groove welds are basically treated same as the parent metal and the failure is governed by the yield strength. So we will use the yield strength value Fy and the throat thickness that is A multiplied by Lw. So A would be 16 millimeters, Lw would be the length of the weld which is nothing but which is same as the width of the flange. So we will take that as 140 millimeters divided by the factor of safety, partial factor of safety. In this case, since this is a uh, field weld, this symbol also represents that this is a field weld. Therefore, gamma MW will be equal to 1.5. And we substitute these values and we get the weld strength as 373 kilonewton. Now for a weld of this strength, how much moment can it resist? Since there are welds present at both ends, um, we can calculate the moment capacity of this weld couple by multiplying this strength with a with the lever arm. So lever arm between the two welds can be estimated as 400 millimeters which is the depth of the beam. To be more precise we could have taken it as the distance between the flange center to the flange center but here uh, it is done rather approximately and this strength turns out to be 149 kilonewton meter. The demand for factored bending moment demand was 125 kilonewton meter and the capacity is 149 which is significantly higher than the demand and therefore this connection can be considered as safe. So we have checked the safety of the bolts, the safety of the weld between the shear tab and the column and the safety of the welds between the beam flanges and the column. Now the remaining aspect of this connection uh, would be to check the safety of this portion of the column. Now again uh, we will not discuss that part in this course. This will be should be should be covered separately in a plate girder section because it is more relevant there. So uh, if you want to study that part in more detail, please go ahead and read those sections in the Indian Standard Code and in the textbook. So this concludes the discussion on non-ductile frame connections. Subsequently, we will talk about the um, the ductile frame connections for earthquake loading conditions.